people want probably want to know well you know when do you decide to do some internal examination mm -hmm. so don't that, worry don't, don't worry and, yeah we're not doing it tonight uh, so that decision is really based on how the patient presents so if someone comes in with full-blown pelvic pain and they know they have pelvic pain you know they've they've been researched it they've contacted the clinic they've said you know i think i've got pelvic pain you see them they know a lot about it they've got like pain bowel urinary they've got everything they can't sit so with that patient at some point they would benefit from having that internal assessment but those those generally are the patients who come into clinic knowing that they're going to have that and wanting to have that because they want mm. that detailed assessment of that pelvic floor. Just out of curiosity, in your profession, what is the consenting procedure for that? In ours, uh, we have to give them 24 hours as a sort of a cooling off period from knowing that we want to do an internal investigation treatment. So within physiotherapy, uh, it, it depends probably within the NHS, there's trust to trust variations. Some have written consent, but most it's verbal consent. Yeah. And within private practice in physics, it's generally verbal consent. However, the consenting process takes place at different stages. Yeah. So it's a bit like if when, when Stephen and I were sitting down, let's say I was asking him all the questions. So I'm... Um, so Stephen is very clear pelvic pain pattern. He's been in touch with us with the clinic pre and um, I might say to him, okay, well, Stephen, what we're going to do is we're going to do some assessment. We will do some of the ultrasound assessment. And, you know, I think we will, it, it would probably be a good thing to examine you internally. Uh, that's really to confirm what's happening with those internal structures. But we can talk about that as we do the assessment. Is that something you're happy with? And Steve might go, yeah, that's what I that's what I kind of assumed we would be doing. Mm. So we've started to broach it there. Then I get him on the plinth and I say, OK, I'm going to do the ultrasound. This is what I've this is what I've found. Uh, I think what it would be good to do is to do that internal rectal examination. The reason I'm doing that is to really assess that internally, that external anal sphincter, that deeper pelvic floor, that obturator in turn is some of those those uh, superior muscles are you happy for me to do that that's consenting again then i would uh, and when we do the internal assessment we do it in supine in this position so the patient is very much part of that internal assessment so if i was doing it on jack he, uh, he would have his knees bent up towel over him he would scoop up in the scrotum so i would see the perineum in opening and but Jack can see me, I, I will explain to him, this is what I'm going to do now. Are you happy for me to do that? So you've probably consented them about three times. Yeah. Uh, interesting in our profession, for, we have to get written consent for intimate examination or oh, treatment. Interesting, so. yeah. And it's a I mean, profession. Yeah, everything else, oral consent is, uh, is acceptable.